this week at Starbase. Ship 33 performs a pair of static fire tests at the Massey Outpost, a multitude of tanks are installed at the launch site, and SpaceX continues to spread their cheer and share their holiday spirit. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week over at the Massey Outpost on Thursday night, Ship 33 was loaded with cryogenics as the latest round of testing on the first Block 2 Starship got underway. Once propellant loading was complete, the rocket performed a spin prime of its six Raptor engines. In the early hours of Friday morning, a new vertical tank was transported to the launch site as SpaceX continues to reconfigure and expand the orbital tank farm to support two launch pads. Within hours, the SpaceX LR-11000 began moving across the launch site to take up a position near the D2 gate in preparation for tank installation. Once everything was ready, the crane was connected to the top of the tank and with an assist from a smaller crane, the vertical tank was rotated upright and installed onto its foundation. In relatively short order, a second vertical tank was connected to the crane, then lifted and installed next to the first. These tanks may be part of a new deluge farm for the new pad. With those now out of the way, the last remaining tank, a long horizontal tank, was driven into position at the end of the row of the hot dog tanks and lowered onto its pedestals. At the build site, the next segment of Booster 16's forward section was brought out of the Star Factory and eventually moved into Mega Bay 1 for stacking. Once stacked, this would bring the latest Super Heavy's methane tank to 13 rings, completing its stacking until it's joined with the liquid oxygen tank. On Saturday, new platforms were spotted being installed in Mega Bay 2. Fully fitting out this building is critical for their planned ramp up in production as they look to increase their launch cadence in the near future. Down at the Massey Outpost, Ship 33 was once again being loaded with propellants. Though the morning fog made visibility difficult, if not non-existent at times, the ship's tanks were partially loaded before detanking. The next afternoon, the process started anew. This time, after propellant load was completed, Ship 33's six Raptor engines breathed fire for the first integrated static fire of a Block 2 Starship. A blue ring was moved down Highway 4 from the Massey Outpost to the build site. This ring has been at Massey's for a while now and has been used in the past on the top of the test tanks as both a load spreader connection point as well as an apparent interface for the testing stand at Massey's. That afternoon, a white mystery structure was moved from the Sanchez site through the ring yard and into Mega Bay 2. Given the construction of this article, it seems likely that it's the framework for some permanent access platforms around the bay's turntable. Over back at the Massey Outpost, testing was once again underway on Ship 33. This time, the Flight 7 Starship performed a single-engine static fire, a test for potential in-space burns. That evening, an interesting load of steel was delivered to the build site and offloaded in front of the high bay. What do you think this steel's for? Knock yourself out in the comments and let us know what you think below. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, Ship 33 moved across the Massey Outpost and onto Highway 4 as it began its return journey to the build site. Several hours later, the Starship rolled into the ring yard gate and was parked outside of Mega Bay 2. Throughout the day, several racks of high-pressure gas tanks were delivered to the launch complex and eventually lifted by SpaceX's LR-11000 and installed near the two vertical tanks, likely also part of a deluge system for the new pad. Back up the road at Mega Bay 2, Ship 33 was lifted off the static fire stand and transferred to the building's back left workstation for final preparations for its upcoming launch. Crews were seen working above the relatively new D1 gate, removing the SpaceX sign that had been installed there and taking the letters away from the launch complex. With the expansion for the new launch pad, the current iteration of the entrance is unlikely to be part of their plans for the finished design. As of now, we'll have to wait and see if and where the sign is eventually reinstalled. That afternoon, the first section of the water-cooled steel deck for the new launch mount was lifted and installed on the lower sections over at the Sanchez site. This new design should allow for increased durability for the new pad. Later, SPMTs with odd-looking payloads were spotted heading out of the build site and down Highway 4. 
That night, we learned what they were for as a SpaceX holiday parade made it through the village before ending at the build site. This parade included Santa in a crane basket, the Grinch, large inflatables of Starship and Starman, and more. On Wednesday morning, crews finished removing the final two letters from the SpaceX sign above the D-1 gate at the launch complex. That afternoon, additional new steel pieces were delivered to the High Bay area, with some pieces being taken inside the building. It's still not clear what exactly these are for, but some speculate that we could be seeing some of the first pieces of a new Starlink loader. Thursday morning, pieces for the chopstick assembly jig began arriving at the launch complex. These red steel pieces will be assembled to create a structure that will support the arms and carriage while they are joined together prior to installation on the tower. Over at the D1 gate, with the SpaceX logo now removed, the concrete beam that spanned the entrance and supported that sign was next on the chopping block. A crane was connected to the beam, and an excavator with a hydraulic breaker attachment was used to break the two ends, freeing the beam from the supporting walls. Over at Pad 1, new Block 2 ship lifting pins were installed onto the chopsticks in preparation for the first Mechazilla lift of the newest iteration of Starship. Switching over to the Cape, Booster 1086 was moved from the dock to the processing stand on Friday morning. Sunday morning, just read the instructions, was towed out to sea, followed early the next morning by Bob. Both vessels were getting into position to support the O3B, M Power 7, and 8 mission. By Monday morning, dockside processing had been completed on Booster 1086, and the rocket was placed onto a transporter for its return to the famous Roberts Road. Also on Monday, the crews at Launch Complex 39A continued their work scrapping the vertical liquid oxygen tank that was built but never used for the site's Starship infrastructure. That evening, Falcon 9 Booster 1085 lifted off on its fourth mission as it sent a third generation of GPS satellites from Space Launch Complex 40 for the Rapid Response Trailblazer 1 mission. Late Tuesday afternoon, we were treated to a rare sight as a fresh Falcon 9 lifted off from Launch Complex 39A. Booster 1090 sent two satellites on their way to orbit for the O3B M Power 7 and 8 mission. Early Thursday, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back into Port Canaveral with Booster 1085 from the RRT-1 mission. And less than two hours later, the first stage rocket was lifted off the deck of the drone ship and transferred to the dock. After less than five hours in port, the drone ship was towed back out to sea, this time in support of the Astranus Block 2 launch. Thursday afternoon, our friends over at Space Flight Now caught some activity at Blue Origin's Launch Complex 36 as they performed an apparent wet dress rehearsal on their first new Glenn rocket. Up the coast at Launch Complex 39A, scrapping of the liquid oxygen tank continued with crews wrapping up the removal of the tank itself, leaving just the base. And over at the port, Doug returned with both of the recovered fairing halves from the RRT-1 mission. And just a few hours later, Just Read the Instructions was towed into port with Booster 1090, back from its first mission just two days earlier. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Merry Christmas and happy holidays, guys. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.